Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be making a cross design on the front of this shirt and a mandala design on the back of the shirt. And the way we're going to accomplish the two design fold is pretty simple. I'm going to take it, get it inside out. We soaked this shirt for about 20 minutes in soda ash water then spun it out real good in the, in the washer. And so we're going to pull out the front, push the arm sleeve through, and then line up our seams so that we get a good design here. few different ways to accomplish this. This is my personal favorite, is just lining up the seams. Seems to be the most efficient way. So this is the back of the shirt, and we're going to do that last, so pull the arms through there, make sure our seams are still lined up. Basically just going to worry about getting this front part real flat for now. There, I think that looks good. That darn bottom. So, I've got a cross outline here. I'm going to go three finger lengths. Some people go four finger lengths from the collar and that just gives you a good design right on your chest. I prefer to go three finger lengths. I've got pretty large fingers so three is good for me. And we'll just kind of throw this on there. Some people might be a little bit more careful with it, but this will work for our purposes. It's not the most straight line in the world, but it will work. You might notice cute little puppies on my cross cutout here. And that is I cut out my cross design from a little pet book. Pretty fond of animals, but that's besides the point. So, there's a cross design drawn on the front, pulled out the back, used a washable marker there as well. So, the first fold. We're going to go like this, try to make sure your lines line up here, or your, yeah, your lines line up here real good. And then, going to make it so it's a straight line, and there we go. Going to do a few folds here. So you want to fold this and this so they're straight, and we're going to fold that down onto here. So, got to make sure your lines are straight. 
and say that is the most important part. I've made the cross design quite a few times, so I can get away with a little bit of variation because I know what I'm doing, but there we go. Try and again make sure that your lines are good there. So I've got some sinew today, and yeah, basically that's where your cross arm will fold out, and I'll include a uh, picture in the final results. But basically I like to start by folding my first fold up here, and then bringing it back about maybe half inch or so, and then doing another fold, trying to keep my line straight. Really try to take your time and keep these lines straight because that's ultimately what is going to create your cross design is that straight line there. And we're gonna get a little bit of sinew here, pull it real tight. And some people will use fishing line or dental floss or kite string or sinew. I prefer sinew as it can leave a really nice white line and I like to go around a couple of times and pull just so that I make sure to create that barrier for the dye so that it will come out nice and white. Then I do a little extra sometimes, and it'll create kind of a fun little design within the cross. Just give it a good little pull at each turn. That'll help you get a good end result. I'm going to wrap it around one or two more times. Pull as tight as you can there. Maybe not as tight as you can because you can break the sinew just like that. But I was about to cut it anyway. So basically there is your cross design. Um, now we're going to work on doing a mandala back, and for this I'm going to pull that sleeve out the opposite way, bring my back right here, try and get a semi-flat surface to make the mandala. Might be a little difficult. Some people might suggest making the mandala before the cross, but I find it a little bit difficult to accomplish those big folds that you need to do with the cross with a mandala. So I guess we're going to tuck that actually back, and the cross is tucked back in there too. We'll pull that out later when we dye it and get it prepared for that process. So, basically with the mandala, you can do four point mandala, eight point, 12 point mandala. I'm gonna probably go for an eight, maybe a 12, we'll see. But basically it's just an airplane fold, like folding an airplane when you're a kid, It's Pretty simple. Um, try and make sure to get a good flat line here because that'll give you a good clean line to fold on to. Also try and keep your surface area flat as that will give you 
a good clean dying result. Some people might like it scrunched, and that's whatever. So this would give you a four point um, and all the fold. This is gonna unfold this a little bit here. This is the eight point. And let's try for a 12 point today. Just for fun. That is one extra fold. Just like that. So that should give you a 12 point mandala. I'm probably not gonna tie off up until up here, so I'm not too worried about how that line reflects and folds, but you do want to make sure that you have a crisp line there and that your folds are lined up properly. So now we're going to flip it and fold the other side down to a 12 point as well. You start with a flat surface area. Your folds are tight. Again, that's the four point star that'll get you that there. This is the eight point star here. And then we're going to try for that 12 point. Man, that's thin. We'll see how it turns out though. So there you have your mandala. There's your lines. Mine could probably be a little bit more crisp and clean. But we'll see how it works. So I'm going to do what I call the dream catcher mandala, which isn't quite what some people call a mandala, and it's more of a dream catcher, but I just call it a mandala. So we're pulling real tight there so we make sure and get that nice crisp line and we're going to pull again in kind of an angled and wrap a couple more times at that angle and pull So again, just doing a couple of lines and then, or a couple of lines of sinew and pulling tight. Might be a little much sinew even, a little too much. We'll see. It's all art. It'll all turn out beautiful. Those first few lines are real tricky. You also want to make sure that as you go, you keep your mandala in place because it can fold and move around in the process. Here we go a few times and just pull. 
tool to lock that in real tight. And essentially what I'm doing here is creating a barrier for the dye. And that's only because this is pre-soaked in soda ash. Um, if it was tied dry, it would it would not have that same effect. Sorry, something fell in the background there. It must have been the dogs messing around. Silly puppies. But basically, keep going. Get a couple of good ones. And then pull. And you can almost feel the sinew kind of lock in there. And then I like to go around a couple more times there just to really ensure that white line comes out clean. And again, just kind of check your, check your lines, keep them flat as you need to. So, I'm going to do maybe a rainbow color on this mandala, I'm not sure. I've wanted to try one of those and I never have. Might be a great time. So, tying this takes a while. Probably gonna cut this part short. And come back. But basically I'm just going to sinew wrap this entire shirt and it'll take me a while, so. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at for now, and I'll get back to you here soon. Here I am doing the rainbow color tie-dye on the mandala. I ended up not doing sinew completely everywhere, but basically this is the back of the shirt. This is the top of the shirt. This is the bottom of the shirt. This I'm trying a small mandala under the cross, which is new. And then I'm doing a mandala. And these two are eight point mandalas that I'm trying on the shoulder area, which I've done before and looked pretty neat. And then I'm doing this, which is new. But basically the rest is just scrunched up. I didn't end up having enough sinew to do it all. So just did what I could. And then I did a little spiral under there with the rest of the, I think it's the sides of the shirt, the bottom sides. So now we're just gonna slang some dye. So essentially, you really got to focus on dye control. Um, it's like your biggest thing. You really want to make sure that you saturate it well, but don't use too much dye. And 
some homemade dye bottles here, which certainly aren't the best, but we'll again work for our purposes here. See, I'm just trying to keep it away from the yellow. And just gonna try to saturate each little part and I'm going a little ways apart because the dye will spread and so just let that dye run a little bit Gonna throw a little splash of orange in there. So then we're gonna add some red. Again, going a little away from each other because the dye spreads. So, I'm adding pink into my mix. Some people wouldn't agree that pink is in the mix, but I'm going for it. I think I forgot some red over here. I'm also going to clamp my mandalas. This should really help that saturation level. Get it through all the layers of the shirt. So, just gonna kind of press into it there. Might have to end up reapplying some dye, which sometimes is just for the best. So also you can see that I'm laying my colors light to dark. I learned that's best because if you don't then you'll end up with your colors running and spreading, which you really don't want. And then you can end up with like darker dyes in places that you don't necessarily want them. And so, just trying to prevent anything that we can from going wrong. Just got to be a little extra mindful and cautious.
That should really help that dye soak in there. And as you can see, I haven't touched the cross yet. Don't know how to really pull off a rainbow effect there. So I'm just going to do a little bit of yellow. Now we're going to move on to the purples. I'm going to let this yellow run for a minute. And we'll just get that in there. Got my purple in a syringe just because I ran out of the stuff in the bottle and had to whip some up real quick. And this is a custom purple that my wife made. So that makes it all the better. Got a little bit of purple there. Yeah, sometimes that just happens and you gotta go with it. It is what it is, people. So I'm gonna try and get a little bit more color here. Somewhere here I've got a soda ash. I just spritz that a little. It'll help everything run through and just attach itself before we add a little bit more. <clears throat> so that should be a pretty unique dye there. is there. That purple bleeds a little bit of blue. So we're going to go ahead and add some baby blue here. So back at it here. The dogs were causing quite the ruckus. And so we're gonna finish off with a little bit of green everywhere. I think this will be pretty incredible. I'm excited for it. Might have to flip it over and do a little bit of dye on the other side as well. Just add a few touches of green here. I'm going to clamp down that purple. Got to open my clamps up a bit. some good saturation. Might even have to add some more of that color later. Yeah, that'll definitely get some good saturation. That'll be sure it 
clean them each time or else I'll transfer dye all over the place. Nobody wants to do that. I think I did that a little bit over here. But like I said, it's all art. It'll all be beautiful. Probably gonna flip it. I can see some white here, so I'm gonna flip it and dye the other side. But I just want to make sure I'm good over on this side. Yeah, that purple's bleeding a little. So. A little dye transfer there just from being a little too quick handed. Might end up throwing a little bit of green over there just to make it blend in. Although green and orange don't make the prettiest colors, but it is what it is. Again, dye control. Going a little crazy here. Sometimes I get excited about the dye. I'm going to go with some baby blue just all over back here just to really create some contrast. died as good as it's gonna get dyed so I'll be back and do the reveal once it's done it'll be about 24 to 48 hours and about 70 degree heat I might throw it on a heat pad and accelerate some of that chemical reaction but we will see I'm excited to see how that cross turned out because it looks interesting from here. And again, this will be kind of a rainbow and a, just a little yellow and lighten that up because I sure did not mean to do that. Just do a little bit more yellow because that will brighten some things up. But if you do yellow and blue, it'll turn it green. So, that's all for now. We'll see you at the reveal.